Now, oftentimes we'll hear WWE commentators refer to how controversial John Cena is, how polarizing of a figure he is, and frankly, I think a lot of us just want to vomit in our mouths if we don't already do it. Because we look and we say, what is controversial about this guy? What really is all that polarizing about him? However, I will say, when it comes to John Cena the man and John Cena the character on television, I think there is one element that is very polarizing. And that comes to his charity work, the work he does with kids, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, what have you. I think that's something that always has been a bit of a lightning rod to a certain degree and has been a great you know, point of debate and discussion when it comes to both John Cena the man and John Cena the character. That is, I would argue, one element of him, both on screen and in real life, that can be a bit polarizing. You know, on the one hand, you've got those that look at all the work he does with Make-A-Wish and the different charities that he's been involved with over the years and say that this is the reason why they like him, they can support him, they believe in what he believes in, and that makes him likable. There are others that sit there and say, I don't necessarily like the performer, but I like the man and what he does, so I'm never really going to hate on him. You have those that will sit there and say the WWE has no choice but to continue to keep him as the top guy because they are a PG kid-friendly company. Company, who's more PG friendly, kid friendly, and representative of that in the WWE's new kind of philanthropic way than John Cena? Then you'll have those that say, oh, come on, give me a fucking break. You know, this guy is just using these charities to keep his spot in the WWE. The WWE is just using it as a way to try and make money in this new 21st century type of business model where philanthropy is a way to do business and make money. It's a way to have the WWE continue to justify pounding Cena down our throats. You get all of that. Now I understand it. So I'm here today is to talk about John Cena and his charity work and whether it's something that we should be praising him for, or it's something we should be criticizing and ridiculing him for. And part of the reason for this is because of a recent episode on Raw where he's having a face down with Kevin Owens, and all of a sudden he starts talking about this kid that's in the crowd that a lot of people assume was a WWE plan and very well could have been, but it's the whole notion of Cena's pointing out this kid talking about his fight, and now it's going to be just like him and his fight. He doesn't give up, so therefore John Cena can't give up. And the cynical, jaded fan, and a lot of us will sit there and say, oh, give me a fucking break. So basically now, we're aligning John Cena with the cancer kid. We're basically saying that if you don't support John Cena, you're not supporting this kid who has cancer. Another way of looking at it is John Cena using somebody like this kid that is battling cancer to try and get himself over, and it comes across very forced and, quite frankly, kind of pathetic. I understand it, and I get it. So it's part of the reason why I wanted to come on here and talk about this a little bit. Now, look, when it comes to charitable work, you know, John Cena has been somebody that's been very involved over the past 12, 13 years during his time in the WWE. He's been involved with other work that the WWE has done, including their work with Susan G. Komen and that Breast Cancer Foundation in the race to find a cure. Most notably, when it comes to John Cena, we know him for his work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I believe he's granted over 400 wishes, more than anybody in the history of Make-A-Wish. This is a guy that has always seen seem to be willing to give time and, you know, be able to give energy to kids that are just looking for a chance to meet their hero. You know, that's not something we should ridicule. That is something we should praise. Regardless of what we want to think about John Cena, you know, the fact is he, he's made a lot of wishes come true for quite a number of children over the years. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, on the one hand, if all of us we're a little more community-oriented and a little more charitable with our time and a little more philanthropic, the world would be a much better place. You know, and I look at it, and I, I firmly believe that John Cena as the man, I, I, I believe that he cares about these causes. He cares about those Make-A-Wish kids. He believes in what Make-A-Wish stands for. And frankly, I don't know how too many people couldn't be in favor of what Make-A-Wish stands for. You know, I believe that he uh, cares about causes like breast cancer awareness and so on and so forth. Now, I'm able to separate between the business aspect 
and the personal aspect. Because the fact of the matter is, is how a guy or individual is in the business world is not always a reflection of who they are necessarily in their real lives. Sometimes it is for the better or the worse. But you could have somebody who is, you know, incredibly kind and caring and from a business standpoint, but is also kind of ruthless personally, or vice versa. Somebody that's incredibly ruthless in a business standpoint, but is incredibly caring and giving of their time, money, and energy uh, in their personal life. So, you know, when I look at it from the John Cena standpoint, yeah, there are times, I, I'll grant you, where you sit there and you talk about the kids with cancer and this and that and the way WWE features them. You know, I understand that. But I can't just sit there and totally knock on the guy for the charitable work that he does do. Even if the company is paying him for it, even if it helps him out in his career out, he's still doing it. He doesn't have to do it. He ultimately makes the choice to do it and continues to make the choice to do it. And for that, I salute him. Now, however, I have some problems with John Cena and his charity work, and in particular, how that charity work is presented to us as fans, as that WWE universe. One problem I have is that it seems like with these different charitable causes, it's like John Cena is the only one who gets credit. Like whether it be Make-A-Wish or Breast Cancer, you guys know what I'm talking about. Whenever it comes to any of these causes, John Cena is always front and center. Now, maybe part of it is behind the scenes. Maybe we don't see that he is the most involved, or it does matter the most to him. But sometimes it sits there and it feels like the WWE is using Cena as a prop, as they do in so many instances, to kind of justify themselves as a company with their philanthropic business model. And they use this as a way to artificially pump up and inflate John Cena's importance to the company and his goodness and therefore the company's goodness. And in particular, like I said, what bothers me about it is all of these other WWE superstars, all these other people in the company that do all this other charitable work, and there are plenty of them that do all types of great and wonderful things. It seems like the only person we ever really truly hear about doing anything is John Cena. And I have a problem with that. To me, we shouldn't be doing it something like that to get credit. But I wonder sometimes, deep down, if Cena does it because he likes the fact that he's the only one that gets credit. But what I really don't like is how the WWE basically only gives him credit. And I also look at this, too, as his charity work a lot of times is used as a poor defense mechanism, in my opinion, for justifying his slot at the top. A guy could be incredibly good when it comes to charitable work and philanthropic things, and he doesn't have to be the guy that's constantly pounded down your throat for over a freaking decade in the top spot. That's a horrible defense mechanism. And then that charity work is also in part used to defend the John Cena character. You know, from the, well, you could sit there and not like the character, but you got to like the person. Who the fuck cares? We're talking about professional wrestling. I'm not really, frankly, all that fucking concerned about how the guy is away from the wrestling business. I'm really not. So stop sitting there and trying to use this as some bullshit type of defense mechanism. It's similar to what the Bush administration did once people started to realize that the Afghan and in particular Iraq wars were becoming an utter and total disaster. Now all of a sudden as a way to try and defend those ridiculous wars, it became this whole narrative about support the troops. And if you started talking poorly about the war or badly about the war and the brain trust behind the war and the philosophy of the war and what the war was actually about, then it was all of a sudden you were against the troops. And that was something that just couldn't happen. And to the credit of the Bush administration, they did a phenomenal job in the mid portion of the 2000s doing just that because the American people are naive and stupid when it comes to those type of things. And that's what this reminds me of in a way. Well, you can't sit there and crap on him or what he does on screen because he does all this charity work, so he's a good guy. No. The guy could be a good guy off screen, but on screen his character could fucking suck. And this whole notion of you have to keep him the exact same because of all this charitable work is complete and total bullshit. And I'm not sitting here and advocating necessarily for a Cena heel turn. It's not something I advocate for, and you've never really known for me to advocate for on a relatively consistent basis over the past almost five years of doing this shit on YouTube. However, at some point in time, there has to be some type of change in the character, some type of evolution or growth or difference in the character. The guy's coming out to the same fucking theme music and the same look that he's had for the past decade. 
and know his charity work is not a good excuse for why that continues to happen. And the other major problem I have, and I know a lot of others have, is that the WWE is using this charity work to their advantage. They're trying to sit there and justify themselves as a company. They're trying to sit there and make themselves look good. They're basically trying to profit off of the charity, the philanthropy that they do. Now, they're not the only ones that do this, and I'll talk about this in a moment. Um, but I can see where the problem comes in. You know, you're looking at it. Is the WWE doing it because it's the right thing to do? Or is the WWE doing it because, yeah, on the one hand, it's the right thing to do, but it also makes us look good, and it helps us. You know, the way WWE presents it and features it, it makes you think that they're doing it. Yeah, it's the right thing to do or it's a good thing to do, but it's ultimately because it benefits the WWE. Now, again, this is not something that is unique and solely of the thought process of the WWE. This is not at all. This is something that is prevalent throughout our history in this country, in particular was in the 20th century and is in the 21st century. So when people will sit there and maybe point to the WWE being the only dogs in town that do this, no, there are companies and entities that do this on a consistent basis. And this is where you come into the problem, I think, of kind of the conflicts of charity. And what I mean is that you look and you wonder when somebody or a group or an organization or an individual uh, starts to do charity work, they, they start to talk about their philanthropy, you start to wonder, are there ulterior motives? And, you know, are they trying to sit there and worry about image? Is this a way for them to uh, try to do business? You know, as Stephanie McMahon once referenced on Twitter, talking about the fact that philanthropy is the new way of business in the 21st century. She's not wrong. She's wrong about a lot of things, but that is not one of them. But I look at some of the conflicts of charity. You look at the WWE. There's one example of a conflict when it comes to their charity work. Yeah, they do lots of wonderful things like the Be A Star campaign and working with Susan G. Komen and the breast cancer awareness. They work very closely with Connor's Cure, a great cause, Make-A-Wish, another fantastic cause, and numerous other fantastic causes, Special Olympics, what have you. And the WWE deserves credit and recognition for being that involved. And that is something that Stephanie McMahon, I feel, for the most part, has brought on. And even though Vince and Linda did it over the years, you know, Stephanie, I think, is she's grown in her role with the company, has made it a more important part of the business model. And largely, I'm glad that they have. It's a good thing. Now, on the other hand, that doesn't change the fact that WWE's done a lot of bad, horrible, evil things over the years. And sometimes I wonder, frankly, you could give all this money to this foundation, give all your time to this foundation. Why can't you be bothered to pay your wrestler's Social Security taxes for them? Why can't you sit there and be bothered to provide health insurance for them? If you believe so much in helping your fellow man, why not help your people that are actually on the front lines making you your business and making you your money? You know, does that instantly make them good because they've done all this charitable work? No. Does it instantly make them horrible when you look at all the things that they've done that have been kind of unsavory over the years? Maybe, maybe not. Again, the WWE is not the only example of this. I look at Bill Gates as a perfect example. You're talking about with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I believe that's the largest philanthropic organization not only in the U.S. but in the entire world. This is a man, a foundation that has given hundreds of millions of dollars to causes of all different types from AIDS research to what have you. So very, very, very much a situation where they put their money where their mouth is and put a lot of money out there to help a lot of these causes. But this is also the same Bill Gates that has for years been one incredible, ruthlessly grimy son of a bitch when it comes to the business world. I mean, you could go way back to when he bought an operating system from somebody and renamed it MS-DOS when he was trying to get his software bought by IBM. You're talking about a guy that basically took what Steve Jobs was able to get from Xerox in terms of the graphical user interface and took it when Steve Jobs presented it to him and ripped it off basically and created what ended up becoming Microsoft Windows. This is a guy that was in major trouble in the 90s with the federal government in terms of monopoly, monopolistic excuse me, behaviors from his company in terms of not only sitting there and getting their software, Microsoft Windows included in all these PCs, but all the other run run along programs that went along with that, basically monopolizing the market in all of those different areas. You know, 
Bill Gates and Microsoft were in a world of hurt in the mid to late 90s in that area. You know, so here he comes when Steve Jobs and Apple need money. You know, Bill Gates steps up to the plate, or did he see an opportunity to get the federal government perhaps a little bit off his back by helping out the competition, therefore eliminating some of the argument about some of his company's monopolistic practices? And then you look at the fact that he started that foundation. He started that foundation in a lot of ways because he wanted to improve his image. And he didn't want to be remembered for the ruthless son of a bitch that most people didn't like in the computer industry. It was about image management. It was about a legacy. So Bill Gates didn't just do it out of the goodness of his heart. Believe you me that. However, he did do it. Should we totally knock him for doing all that he's done to help so many different people and so many causes around the world because of the ruthless son of a bitch that he was, the manipulative asshole that he was in the business world, because of some of the ulterior motives that were definitely in play when it came to starting that foundation? You know, again, it's a matter of perspective. I look at a company that I work for, like a Wells Fargo, sits there and they even pay their employees time to sit there and go work in the community, a very very charitable organization. However, this is also the same type of company that in the 2000s was very heavy in the subprime mortgage area, especially in a place like Baltimore, which ruined thousands upon thousands of you know, predominantly black families by sticking them in these subprime mortgages that they had no business getting, and then they got upside down, and then all fucking hell broke loose. You know, so does it necessarily make Wells Fargo, a good company that they sit there and do all of this charity work, all the while they're still a bank, and fundamentally, banks are a freaking ripoff and about as evil as you can get. You know, does that mask away all of that? You know, the fact that they were involved with all the subprime shit and so many other bad practices over the years, does that automatically make them evil? And do they not deserve any recognition for that charity work, even though you know in a lot of ways that charity work is about image and it's a good way to try and help the brand? I mean, that's the reality of it. These businesses and a lot of rich individuals aren't doing this just out of the goodness of their heart. There are always ulterior motives at play. And frankly, from us on an individual level, us regular Joe Schmoes of the world, even when we go give to like the Goodwill or the Salvation Army, we'll sit there and be worried in some cases about getting a receipt so that way that charitable donation could be classified as a tax write-off. So even then, we might be doing something that's good, but there still seems to have to be something in it for us. There's still an ulterior motive there. And the ultimate conflict, I would always say, I'll point to the Bible. And sure, this will not uh, please some of you, but tough shit. This is a simple fact of the matter. You look at things that the Bible teaches and the teachings of Jesus, and even when you look at it, you know, and you're talking about the meek shall inherit the earth, and that you know the rich should give to the poor, and all of this. In a lot of ways, what does it ultimately come down to? It's not about doing good by your fellow man for the sake of doing good by your fellow man. It's not sitting there and saying the rich should give to the poor just because it's the right thing to do. It's because there's ultimately some type of selfish reward at the end, which is entrance into the kingdom of heaven. So even the fucking Bible, for crying out loud, teaches us this conflict of charity. It teaches us about these ulterior motives. People aren't sitting there and doing all this charity work through their churches and what have you just because it's the right thing to do, just because it's a good thing to do, just because they're helping out their fellow man, just because they want to teach their kids right from wrong and what to do and what have you. It's because they know deep down inside this might help them get to a place that they believe exists. So this whole thing with John Cena and the WWE when it comes to charitable work is by no means, by no means, a unique phenomenon whatsoever. A lot of times when it comes to charitable work, it's about us getting something back in return ourselves, whether it's the warm and fuzzy feelings, it's trying to sit there and do this community service so that way you don't have to serve jail time, it's about trying to sit there and you know wash away from some of our sins of the past and trying to sit there and change our lives and you know turn over a new leaf to image protection to helping out your business getting your business's name out there I mean it's so many different things so to me you can like Cena's charity work and hate his character 
I think that's one of the most ridiculous things that I hear is when people say you shouldn't hate on the on-screen character because that's hating the man. Well, no, that's not the case at all. And just because the guy does charity work doesn't mean his character doesn't completely and totally fucking suck. Now, on the same token, it doesn't mean that I can't sit there and question some of the ulterior motives for somebody like a John Cena doing charity work because I know there are ul ulterior motives. But again, that's not something that is unique and solely of John Cena and or the WWE. So, I mean, I don't like that he's the only one who gets the attention for it. You know, and I think sometimes maybe John Cena could be talking about some of the others that do the charitable work and talk about all the others that care and this and that and everything else. But the WWE, no, I don't particularly like the way they prostitute John Cena out there as the greatest charitable worker of all time. The greatest philanthropic mind we have ever seen. And I don't like in some ways how the WWE uses that as a way to make their company look better to ultimately help out their business. But ultimately, the WWE and John Cena are doing what many others do. It's the nature of the beast. If we want to get, you know, fundamental with it, if we want to get to that level, this is damn near biblical shit. I mean, if we're really being serious about it, think about it. Even the Bible teaches you to do these good things, not because of the right thing to do, but because it's about getting to the kingdom of heaven. So the Bible teaches you that. But yet somehow we just knock John Cena for it. We knock the WWE for it. When he's by no means the only individual that does charity work and does it for ulterior motives. And WWE is by no means the only company that sits there and does their charity work with ulterior motives. Like I said, most every company, most every individual does charity work uh, in some way, shape, or form with some type of ulterior motive in mind. And that is just an indisputable fact in my mind at least. Now, if you get tired of John Cena being featured as the only guy that does the charity work, I understand you because I agree with you. If you don't like how the WWE sits there and prostitutes all this charity work out there uh, to sit there and try and make themselves seem a lot better than what they actually are, I understand. And again, I'm kind of with you. I frankly think if the WWE cares that much, again, maybe you should pay their fair share of their employee social security tax. That way they're not passing on that whole expense to their independent contractors. And they should maybe choose to provide the wrestlers with health insurance. You know, but again, this whole thing of John Cena using kids uh, with cancer to get himself over, yeah, it does make you want to kind of vomit in your mouth. But how many other organizations, how many other people do the same fucking thing? It doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it wrong, even though you can look at it kind of as being wrong. It just kind of is the reality of the world that we live in. You know, does John Cena doing this? And for these specific ulterior motives necessarily make him a bad guy? Does John Cena doing all of this, you know, automatically make him a good guy and allow you to whitewash over everything else? You know, again, I guess it's just up to kind of personal opinion. I'm never going to knock on John Cena for the charitable work he does. Ulterior motives or not, same thing with WWE. Even though sometimes I might not like the way that they feature it and they present it on their television, it's still, they're doing things that regardless of the reasons they're doing it or the motives that they have for doing it, is still helping out others. And it's something I very strongly believe in. I'm just not going to sit there either and sit there and say, well, WWE does all of this, so that makes them a good okie-dokie company. Or that John Cena does all of this, so that's why he still deserves the top spot. And that automatically makes him a good guy. I'm not going to do that either. Believe what you will. Believe what you want. But just understand this, that when it comes to John Cena and the WWE and it comes to charity, it really is a conflict of charity. And I hope you understand that this is not something new or unique to just Cena and the WWE. Just keep that in mind.